Joining us in the studio today, we have the Australian Envoy to Zimbabwe, Ambassador Makot. Welcome. Thank you very much, Bianca. Getting right into it, can you reflect on the relations that exist between your, co your country, Australia, and Africa as a continent? Thanks. That's a great question to start with. I think there's been a long relationship uh, between Australia and the African continent and, of course, Zimbabwe in particular. Um, but one thing that is changing, I think, is that previously uh, a lot of Australians thought about our relationship with Africa in kind of development space or humanitarian response. But I think we're really maturing in our outlook and now focusing on Africa as a partner for development, economic development, which will benefit Australia as well as African countries. So a more, uh, I think, nuanced and, uh, and um, uh, mature approach on commercial relations. So that means you're going to be seeing more of economic collaborations between Australia and a lot of African countries? Absolutely. So our focus um, to date in the economic space has been very heavily mining focused. And that's because Australia is a, itself a very successful mining country. And so we've been able to use our expertise in having successful collaboration in Africa um, in, in a whole range of countries, in a whole range of commodities and also providing a whole range of services, not just the actual digging things out of the ground, but exploration and providing services. But what we're also looking to do is expand and diversify the relationship to much, uh, much broader economic space. So lots of different areas and opportunities. Okay, talking about the partnerships that exist between Australia and Africa. Uh, Perth Beck in Australia recently had an Africa-Australia Week in which there was a, a number of African countries, I understand. Can you elaborate more on that? This is a really productive um, private sector run initiative in Australia, but it's supported by the Australian government because it's such a, a great week. It's, it's mainly based around uh, a conference called Africa Down Under, which is a mining conference. And traditionally a number of African ministers or uh, relevant ministries have representatives who come to Australia, to Perth, in this week in early September to talk to Australian mining companies and investors about the possibility of doing business in Africa. But it's now grown into a broader week where this year we saw sporting events, cultural events, we saw an academic conference, an Australia-Africa conference looking at collaboration in the academic space. There's an oil and gas conference that's held in the same week. So it's really uh, developing as a focal point for Australia-Africa relations that will be held every year. And I see you mentioned a lot about mining in Africa. It seems Africa is solely like, oh, we, of course we have agriculture, but mining seems to also be taking its stand when it comes to African economics. Uh, can you t tell us about how Zimbabwe, where Zimbabwe is according to Australia as far as our mining industry is concerned? So in terms of Australian investment, I would say that there are other countries that have greater levels of Australian investment in the mining sector than Zimbabwe. Um, as, I, as I've said a number of times here and in Australia, um, mining is a competitive industry and capital flows to where the environments are most conducive to investment. And we're talking in the mining sector, of course, very long term investment, 20, 30, 40 years. And so companies need that security to know that their investment is going to pay dividends in the long term. Um, I've been encouraging uh, since my time in Zimbabwe for um, economic reforms that will um, make Zimbabwe a more attractive environment compared to the uh, surrounding countries who are of course competitors in trying to attract capital. Okay going back to the Australia Africa week are we going to be seeing more of those events is it going to be an annual thing or? So it's been running for a number of years I think uh, over 15 years now and it is an annual event held in early September every year and it's been really well supported by African countries. Zimbabwe uh, was represented this year by the Deputy Minister of Mines um, Mr Moyo and that was a really great opportunity for him to present Zimbabwe as an as a, uh, investment destination for Australian mining companies. Can we say African countries are embracing the idea of partnering with Australia when it comes to economic development? I think that's right. I mean there were uh, over 10 ministers from different African countries at this conference and that's been my experience in previous years as well. Mm. So African countries, the mining ministers uh, and the mining ministries understand the importance of getting in face to face with Australian investors and mining companies to talk about this. There are other uh, 
conferences of a similar nature, also one that's in Cape Town every year called the Mining in Darba, but that doesn't have a particular Australian focus, that has a, a, you know, a continent-wide focus. So this, this one in Perth is special mm. because it's focused on Australia and Africa okay, mining. So. Besides mining, uh, do you think that Zimbabwe as a country has the potential of rising in any other economic sectors? Uh, absolutely. And as I mentioned before, Australia is looking to diversify its economic interests in the whole of Africa, including Zimbabwe. And agriculture is an obvious area of opportunity, given that uh, Zimbabwe is such a successful um, agricultural nation, as shown that it has been in the past. But there's also other areas. Zimbabwe has also been a very successful ma manufacturing country, and there are certainly opportunities for Australia in that space. So I think, uh, I think there's an awesome, awful amount of opportunity in Zimbabwe, and uh, we want, from the embassy perspective, we want Australian companies to be a part of that. That's great. Join us in the second segment of the Diplomatic Encounter as we chat more to the Australian ambassador. to the second segment of the diplomatic encounter. Ambassador, so we were talking about the relationship that exists between Australia and Zimbabwe specifically. Can you tell us about Australian investors that are already in the country? So there are a number of Australian investors in the country and as I mentioned before, we're keen to attract more. We recently had a visit from our Trade Commissioner for Africa, who's based in Johannesburg, uh, and trying to um, in encourage him to also uh, find opportunities uh, to communicate back to business in Australia. It is a longer term project uh, it, across the continent as well as in Zimbabwe, getting Australians to focus on the opportunities here. But there are, there are obviously benefits for Australian companies. The fact that there's a highly educated workforce in Zimbabwe, people speak English, the, 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 the governance systems and the, the court systems and all those things are very familiar to Australia. And of course our natural resources are also very familiar. Australia is also a nation that has succeeded based on mining and agriculture and manufacturing. So there's a lot of similarities. So what seems to be the factors, maybe the factors that are slowing down the process of uh, the trickling in of Australian um, investors into the country? So as I mentioned before, I mean, there's, a, there's a, a degree of confidence that's required for investors. And I know for sure, having come back from this Perth Mining Conference, that there are plenty of people who are interested in investing in Zimbabwe, but they're interested in also um, seeing what happens in this country and that its potential is, is really tapped. And as I mentioned before, economic reform is one of those things that we think is uh, really important to demonstrate to the international community that uh, Zimbabwe is really open for business. I'm aware that the government is actually doing a lot of work in terms of um, ease of doing business in the country. The embassy, Australian embassy, does what it can. Okay, we were talking about the Australia-Africa weekend path. Uh, can you tell us, uh, I mean, we understand that the, um, uh, the Japanese, sorry, the Japanese TICAD conference almost happens the same week as the Australia-Africa week. Uh, some people have been assuming that that's because there's competition uh, for economic space from developed countries in Africa. Yeah, I don't think that's uh, accurate. As I mentioned before, the mining conference in Perth is an annual event and it's always held in early September. So I think it was just an unfortunate coincidence. Um, so there's no competition, as far as I'm aware, between uh, between countries who are wanting to uh, put their best efforts into collaborating with African countries and, and improving uh, economic development here. Certainly from the Australian perspective, that's not the case. I think uh, there, are, there are lots of international events and there's bound to be some clashes sometimes. Now, Africa has been plagued with uh, terrorism, wars, civil strife in the recent years. Uh, how has that affected how foreign investors, particularly from Australia, do business in Africa? Um, of course it is a factor. Um, Investors, if they set up a company uh, in, in a country, they have responsibility for their staff, they have a res responsibility for the investment that they've made to their shareholders. So that has to be a factor. 
but it is a factor that um, particularly in the mining sector Australian companies are quite familiar with they have a long experience of working in Africa and so we'll factor those issues into their into their their plans and the embassy can play a role in that in providing accurate advice about what's going on sometimes the newspaper headlines in Australia and other countries don't accurately reflect exactly the situation on the ground how is how is Australia prepared to embrace Africa and practice business with Africa in light of, of this problem that we have? I, I don't necessarily agree that you can generalise about Africa having problems. I think there are enormous opportunities and that's the prism through which Australia and the Australian business are, are looking at the moment. So, um, of course, businesses have to make um, informed, calculated choices about where they put their money, but there's certainly lots of opportunities for growth and development to the benefit of both the Australian company and the African partners and African governments. So that's what we want to see, win-win solutions rather than somebody winning and somebody losing. And how do you see the relations that exist between Australia and Africa, zooming in on the next five years or so? I really think that, uh, as I said, Australia is seeing uh, Africa through a more sophisticated lens now. So looking at collaboration, off, you know, mainly in the business scape, but also there's so many other levels of cooperation. There's, um, there's a lot of education uh, exchange, there's cultural exchange, there's um, I think a lot of people to people exchanges. So there's a, a, a growing understanding uh, of Africa in Australia, and I hope a growing understanding of Australian in Africa. So um, I think it's the, the um, future in the next five years is really, uh, I'm very optimistic about uh, you know, strengthening our relations in Africa and, and moving forward together. Talking about people-to-people -people exchange, do we have a lot of Australians coming into the country specifically for the purpose of viewing our tourist attractions in so Zimbabwe? Absolutely. I mean, Victoria Falls being a, a main highlight, of course, and we have a lot of Australians uh, coming through. But also, you know, we, we, we love to have Australians come through and look at the other major sites in Zimbabwe. Um, the Great Zimbabwe Ruins being a real favourite of mine, but also, of course, the amazing national parks. So that is an ongoing thing. We also have um, quite a lot of other exchanges. There are often um, Australians coming through doing volunteer work for church or other organisations and, uh, you know, um, potentially raising funds back in Australia for, for work with communities here, which is really terrific. And one very positive thing that we're proud of is that there are a lot of Zimbabwean students studying in Australia mm -hmm as well and that gives Australia, Zimbabweans a fabulous opportunity to experience the life in Australia for a few, few years as well. So back in Australia we also have a community of Zimbabweans and even more so Africans especially under the education sector. Mm. Yeah absolutely so there are a, a number of Zimbabweans and indeed broader Africans who have made Australia their home and we benefit from that because Zimbabweans in particular are very highly skilled people who have brilliant la language skills and um, often brilliant qualifications and so they fit really well and easily into the Australian system so we're, we're very grateful for that. But for students what, what the real aim is for people to study in Australia, enjoy their experience, maybe get some brief work experience afterwards and then come back and then they contribute back to Zimbabwe or other African countries. Okay, join us in the last and final segment of the Diplomatic Encounter as we hear more about Zimbabwean students that are studying in Australia. Welcome to the last segment of the Diplomatic Encounter, where we've been talking to the Australian Ambassador to Zimbabwe, Ambassador Makot. We've been talking about the relationship that exists between Australia and Africa, especially Zimbabwe. Ambassador, we were talking about the educational exchange that exists between Australia and Africa, especially Zimbabwe. Can you elaborate more on that? Yeah, so there's plenty of opportunities for study in Australia. Australia has one of the um, best education systems in, in the world and we're really proud of that. And a lot of universities have discovered that as well as uh, uh, Asia and other areas that international students could come from, um, Africa is a great source of high quality students and particularly in, in Zimbabwe. So we're very pleased to have uh, over 5,000 students uh, at the current time in Australia studying 
most of those are fee paying students. There are some people on scholarships, but most of them um, have decided you know, that they want to spend their money on a quality education in Australia and we're very proud of that. Considering that uh, the Zimbabwean government has been especially emphasising on the need to educate our students uh, in scientific subjects, engineering subjects, technology oriented subjects, is Australia doing anything especially along? those points of studying. So Australia has an excellent reputation in those fields and uh, so there are plenty of opportunities for study in Australia. Um, the great thing about Australia is that we have a lot of universities and so students can actually find what best suits them both in terms of lifestyle but also in terms of course content. Um, one of the highlights last year for us at the embassy here was that we had a, uh, a science educator come out uh, and do a science circus who was also featured on your show which uh, really uh, was targeted at school children and highlighting the importance of of science in education and particularly focusing on goals because there's a lot of girls don't think that science or engineering is for them so that was something that we were really happy to um, support in collaboration with the the Ministry of Education okay. and zooming in on your term here in Zimbabwe uh, what are some of the projects and operations that you've been on? So in terms of development cooperation? Economic development, cultural exchange and even education as we're talking about. Sure, so we have a really a diverse range of things that we do at the embassy which makes um, my job really exciting. We do have a development cooperation program which has traditionally been focused on water and sanitation mm -hmm. and also providing um, support for um, for um, uh, smallhold farmers and really empowering them to um, to develop economically and be self-sustaining which is something that has been really terrific. We have a small grants program at the embassy which enables us to support um, community projects which aren't necessarily part of the broader uh, de big development projects but are really able to make a big difference in the community both in Harare but also in particular in the rural areas. Um, but we have lots of other connections. Um, we have we support the Zimbabwe Australia Business Council, which is a group of Australian and Zimbabwean business people who are here uh, and uh, providing support to possible new entrants and also networking amongst themselves to to build the relationships. And we've also supported their equivalent. Um, recently it started up in Sydney, so the Australian Zimbabwe Business Council, which is something really, really terrific to support. We also pro provide a lot of support to the Zimbabwe Australia Alumni Association. So that's a group of people who have previously studied in Australia and are now back contributing to the Zimbabwean economy. And they hold terrific events um, that we provide assistance to. And I'm really proud at the work that they've done to, to establish themselves. And of course, um, whenever there is a, you know, a visiting sporting team, we're very happy to to um, help at the embassy with any Australian teams that come through. We've supported uh, um, performances at Haifa in recent years. And so there's a whole range of things that we do, um, as well as, uh, you know, obviously hosting visitors from Australia who are interested in, in talking to the Zimbabwean government and others about what's going on here. So it's a very diverse role. Zimbabwe and other African governments have been f fighting to promotes gender equality, especially among women uh, and men, considering the issues of gender-based violence, the abuse of young girls who are being married maybe underage. You as, a, as an Australian ambassador and being a woman, can you inspire the Zimbabwean girls that exist out there? This has, uh, of course, been a great opportunity for me um, as a woman ambassador. You know, I guess there's a there's a natural space to work in in this in this um, area and uh, we've certainly done a number of things at the embassy to encourage younger women to follow their dreams and take the initiative. I mentioned the science circus before, we've also had workshops at the embassy um, where we invite speakers, successful Zimbabwean businesswomen to talk to um, older schoolgirls about opportunities. Um, we of course talk to them about educational opportunities and we've also held events highlighting the very serious issue of gender-based violence, domestic violence, um, child marriages, that kind of thing. So there are a whole range of kind of angles to tackle, to tackle you know, the issue of uh, women's equality and, and we've played a small part in that I hope.
But do you think the African governments are doing enough to address this issue of gender inequality? Well, it's for every country, of course, to address it in its own way, as is culturally appropriate. I wouldn't say that Australia itself has completely got the balance right. Um, and of course, there are very senior leaders in uh, in African countries who are women. So there's no, I guess, uh, right answer, but it does require a commitment from government, from civil society, from community groups to raise awareness about these issues, perhaps potentially change cultural norms so that the things, actions are no longer seen as acceptable, even if they had previously, and to empower women to believe that they have every opportunity that a man can have. So Your Excellency, what is your message to the people of Zimbabwe? So to the people of Zimbabwe, I say that Australia is, is a good friend and collaborator and we're very pleased to have a strong presence in Zimbabwe and do all the things that I described before in development, in economic uh, reform, in, in cultural space, that there are so many aspects of the relationship that are so positive and it's very natural I think because Zimbabweans and Australians have so much in common that uh, we're uh, easily able to communicate and collaborate and be friends so we're certainly wanting to be friends here. Thank you Your Excellency for joining us for today's edition of the Diplomatic Encounter. Thank you Zimbabwe for joining us. For your uh, comments please do get in touch on the links below. From me and the Diplomatic Encounter crew it's goodbye.